In this video, I want to introduce you to another area of the layer style panel, the drop shadow. Uh, this can be an enormously helpful area for creating composites, creating realistic effects, and sometimes just creating effects, period. Uh, but I want to give you a little introduction to how it works. Now, there's a bunch of other stuff on the layer style panel, and I won't discourage you from using that. I'm not going to introduce it yet. When we get to the text um, tool, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay, so uh, remember we have a number of different ways that we can get to the layer style panel, but before we do that, let's get this image set up. One of the things about drop shadow um, is that it can't work unless an image is masked or isolated. Uh, and actually, let's go ahead and pull up the layer style panel so you can see that if we uh, thought we might want to create drop shadows on these birds, um, it is not going to do anything at all. And that's because right now, according to Photoshop, this is one single image, this one uh, pixel layer. We need to mask the birds out and then they become individual objects and then we can create drop shadows. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to use, uh, in this case, the magic wand. Uh, we haven't used the magic wand a lot. It isn't, uh, it's very, very useful for selections in specific circumstances. So in this case, I have these birds lined up and uh, they are all against this very uniform, very clear blue sky. So if you have, and none of the birds are blue. So if you have a nice clear color, uh, the magic wand tool can work really nicely. I have it on additive. I'm going to click here and you see it selects that segment of sky and then here, and then here. And it selected all three segments of sky. Now, it selected the sky, not the birds. So remember that when we make a mask, it's going to go the other way. Now, that's not what we want, but not a big deal. We just select the mask, do Command-I, and it inverts it. And you can see this is basically what I was looking for, is to have these birds against this stone wall. Uh, this is actually a close-up of a stone wall, but we're creating this illusion that it's a big, massive cliff. How about that? Now, the selection still needs a lot of help, but let's not worry about that for now, because I just want you to see how this operates. I want to create some shadows of the birds onto the wall, and so it's amazingly easy to do to get started. There's some more complicated com complications as we go. But uh, remember, there's a few different ways. We're going to go to the layer style panel. There's a few different ways. You can go up here to the layer style panel. You can go down here, or you can just do the little magic secret handshake. And just double click here and bring it up. Okay. So remember, this is this annoyingly large panel <laughs> that will just sort of move around. Maybe we can move this a little bit out of the way to make room for this giant unmovable panel. Uh, it defaults into the blending options, which uh, you worked with in the last video. Um, we're not going to work with those right now, although we will come back into, well, we'll work with blending options in our next choice. And the drop shadows all the way on the bottom. Now, here's an interesting thing about the drop shadow that I won't get into yet. You can add more than one drop shadow. Uh, there's a few of these tools that you can do that with. So as soon as I add the drop shadow, I've actually got it on a rather subtle choice. So it's there, but you can't uh, really see it. I'll go ahead and change some of these uh, tools so that you can, you can see more what's going on. I'm going to make this just a little darker. That's the color. We're going to leave the blend mode normal for now. We'll play with that in a little bit. And uh, let's get the opacity up. We want it very opaque. And actually, before we play with the angle, I want to just, oh yes, I left it at some of these goofy things. I want to just change a couple things. There we go. So I'm going to change the distance and the spread. And I'll show you, I'll walk you through all of these. So you can see it creates this beautiful drop shadow, not just of the individual birds, but also of 
the cable that they're sitting on. Now, I've got it at 100% opacity, which definitely is not where we want it to be. And I've also got it on a normal blend mode. Now you can work with a combination of these things. I've got it on this sort of deep chocolate brown because that sort of fits with the stone wall. Uh, let's start by just dropping the opacity down a little bit and that helps an awful lot. Um, we could also play with our blend mode. Now one of the things about the blend modes here is you actually have to click on them. They don't preview and you can see those are going to be hopeless. They don't preview the way that they do in the uh, regular layers area. So I think we'll go with darken. That's generally a very good default one for your, um, for your shadows, but you can play with other ones. You, I mean, there's crazy things you can do with these drop shadows. Right now I'm gonna show you a sort of realistic one, but remember you could make your drop shadows orange. <laughs> you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, let's show you a couple other things though. There's a lot going on on this panel. We can change the angle of it. Now, I did have a student the other day say, I don't quite get this um, because she was saying like, you're pointed this way, but the shadow goes the other way. Think about this as the direction that the light is coming from. So this, the light is coming from here, the shadow will fall on the other side. So if the light is coming from below, the shadow is above, which doesn't really make much sense here. If it's coming from above, it's going to be below. Okay, we'll change it to a little, basically 45 degree angle. Now the global light has to do with sort of the spread of the light. And generally I keep the global light on. It's going to give you a much more natural look. Now these three work in tandem or <laughs> sometimes not in tandem. And they can be a little bit tricky to uh, keep track of. I know that I always have to play with them a while. The distance is pretty straightforward. This just has to do with how far away the shadow is. So if you pull it all the way over here, if you get all the way to the end, it just vanishes. But you can see it just moves the shadow further away from the object. And if you go the other direction, it puts the shadow right underneath. Okay, and that can be enormously handy because it's going to, sometimes during with certain kinds of light, that shadow is going to be sitting more underneath the object. We're going to leave it just almost there, just so you can see that a little bit more, a little bit more on that angle. There we go. Oop, maybe just a touch more. I love playing with the drop shadow. Okay, so the spread, now this is always a little bit uh, tricky for me because the spread actually has to do with the diffusion. So if you're all the way to the right, there is no diffusion. It's very, very hard edged. If you're all the way to the left, there's so much diffusion that in this case, the shadow sort of evaporates. Think about it as hard or soft light. And if you're somewhere in the middle, you get those soft edges. The size has to do with the actual size of the shadow. But you notice that the size and the spread really work together because if the size gets too small, the spread goes away as well, All right? So once we get to a certain size of shadow, the spread, the diffusion isn't going to happen. So it gets to be a little bit of an interesting sort of game between these two the spread and the, sh the size. And you can get into some sort of strange effects if you go too far one way or the other. Um, so these really are just kind of great to play with. Okay, I'm gonna leave it about like that. Now, I actually wanna change one thing. Let's go ahead and make this spread a little bit bigger and the size a little bit bigger because I want to show you these, this area down here. And uh, this is a really trippy area. I don't use it very much, um, but in order to show you how it really works, I'm going to need to put a different layer on because you won't be able to see it against this stone wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and I'm gonna go and add a solid layer color. 
And I'll just add a nice kind of light yellow. There we go. Because this will make it very easy for us to see the drop shadow. And again, don't mind my selection. Um, we would need another 15 or 20 minutes practice to get the to get the, the color out of here and get that selection a little better. So ignore that for now. It's imperfect, um, but let's check out the drop shadow. So I'm going to go back into the drop shadow and just like with the blending layers, by the way, or the blending modes, by the way, um, you can uh, you can have a very good time with the um, with going back and forth. You the, these are completely non-destructive. Um, so just like with the blending modes, these are completely non-destructive. You can go back and forth and you can change them anytime you want. Very handy. So okay, so we're back up here and let's just play again. This will help you to show, help you to see the kind of interesting relationship that we have between the spread and the size and the size and the spread okay so in order to get that sense of diffusion we have to sort of play with that now i'm going to leave that there for now because i want to show you uh, this very very interesting area this changes the contour of the shadow now it defaults to this just regular flat shadow where it just goes from one end to the other. Um, but we have all of these crazy options and you can make, I believe, a, uh, yes, you can actually uh, create a custom contour, which I'm not gonna do for you all tonight. So check this out. These get to be very strange. I'm gonna click through them. So they're changing how the, the range of the shadow and these may seem kind of nutty, and for most purposes they really are, but occasionally you will have something that where it makes sense to have a shadow that is dropping in and out. Maybe it's a double, um, a double illumination. And so there are times, aside from special effects, where these could be handy. Uh, let's just go to this guy for a second. And Again, just start to play with your size and your spread. And you can see that this gets to be a little bit interesting. And we can create a kind of an interesting, oh, let's go this way, kind of an interesting effect with that. Um, if I go back and I say, okay, and I put it back on the wall, you can see that what, when it goes onto the wall, it just creates a kind of a subtle effect of these, uh, these birds being uh, cast on the wall. So you don't see those sort of obvious contours. It could also be used for special effects. If I put it back on and I played with that and I brought the opacity up. Oops, let's go back. If I bring the opacity up, I could change it to a very wild color, uh, maybe a darker color, um, and I could do some sort of graphic crazy fun with it. And that really can be kind of a playful way to work. Okay, so the drop shadow can be used for wonderful realistic effects. It can really save your life when you're compositing. Uh, to ground images into space, um, but it also can be a fun graphic tool. Enjoy!